Okay, welcome you 12s to this final video for core. This is the last little bit that we need to run through for the statistics topic, which is great. We've been doing it for a very long time. What I'm going to take you through in this video is how we de-seasonalize data. So um, there's a reason we want to do this. So just like when we did our smoothing, we've got data that has some peaks and some troughs in it. So you might remember when we did our median and mean smoothing, you might have data that's quite jagged like this. If it's seasonal, it means that those peaks and troughs are happening regularly, happening about the same time each year. And to be able to fit a straight line to this data, what we'd need to do is try and reduce these peaks that are happening here, and we want to lift these little troughs as well so that it more resembles a straight line when we put a line through it um, and we can use that the equation of that line to make predictions. So this is essentially a way of smoothing seasonal data. Now we did our in the last lesson we looked at seasonal indices and how we calculate those so remember we we took the raw data and we divided by the average and you get a number you get a number that that we call the seasonal index and there are those numbers there so for summer autumn winter spring that's from a, a previous example and we're going to use those uh, those numbers there in this deseasonalizing process so what we have here is raw sales data for three years 08 09 and 2010 and for four seasons within that year and what we're going to do is de-seasonalize it. So this means removing the seasonal influence from that data. So it means reducing those points where the data is really high, so the peaks, but also lifting where the data is really, really low because we know that sometimes there is a seasonal influence. Things like sales, they may be higher in December or um, say you were selling something like winter gear, that's obviously going to be higher in winter than it is in summer. So we've got our seasonal indices or seasonal index for each season down there. To de-seasonalize, so to take out the seasonal influence, what we need to do is take our original data value. These are the ones in this table here. These are your, This is your raw data, your original data. What we're going to do is divide by the appropriate seasonal index. So what I mean by that is if we're using summer data, we must divide by the summer seasonal index. So that's what it means by the appropriate one. What this means is if you've got a really, really high, if you've got a high seasonal index, say our highest one in this list is 1.3, that means when you divide by that number, it is going to reduce. So whatever your original was, if you divide by something greater than one, it is going to reduce the number. But if we look at spring, for example, spring the seasonal index is only 0.52. When you divide by that, if you divide by a half, you actually double your values. So for that reason, you'll be able to see quite clearly how deseasonalizing has a really great effect on reducing those peaks and lifting those troughs. So this is how we do it. We take our original data, we divide by the seasonal index. If you take a look at these first few down here, they've done, been done for you. So to get this one, 8.93 in here, we've taken the original data, which is 9.20, and we've divided by the appropriate seasonal index, the seasonal index for summer, which is 1.03. And when you do that, you'll round it off, obviously, and this one rounds to 8.93. Now, if I do that for the other, sorry, I'll just remove that there. If I do that for this one here to get 2009, again, take your raw data, which is 1035, divide by the seasonal index for summer, 1.03, you come out with 1005 when you round it off. The last, the other two there are done for you. So obviously for 2010, we've taken 1299 divided by 1.03 and for autumn this one here 943 that's from 1035 divided by the autumn seasonal index so divided by 1.15 and you get 943. What I want you to do is fill in this table so go through each and de-seasonalize each of these so for the next one in autumn for 2009, I'm, I'm doing 1,180 divided by 1.15. I've done that one already. You should come out with 1026. 
And if I do that again for the final uh, piece of data for autumn, 1324 divided by 1.15, you get 1151. So you might like to pause here and do those yourself first. I'm going to put all the answers in so you can check for yourself at the end. This is what you should get. And that is our deseasonalized data. The seasonal influence, those peaks and troughs, have been removed. And this, what, what it should do when we graph it is we should see a smoother graph. And therefore, when we fit a line to it, it's, it's going to be a stronger linear relationship. It's going to mean that we can make some predictions and they're going to, they are going to be more accurate. Okay. Just at the bottom here, so the resulting data, we can examine it for long-term trends, equations, and we can use it to forecast. So basically that's saying we can fit a line, we can have a look at, at the trend, we can have a look at the gradient, is it going up, is it going down, make an equation from that and use that equation to forecast. So by forecast, we mean make some predictions uh, for the future. What I want you to do is copy this table onto the next page. You'll see that there is... Um, there's a table here set out for you with quarter. Uh, what we've done is we have uh, ordered the, the seasons uh, by year. So obviously all of these seasons are now sitting in chronological order. And once we do that, we can assign a number to each quarter so that we can put these numbers here, these quarter numbers. So this part, we're going to put that into the calculator. We won't be able to plot a time series graph using summer, autumn, winter, spring. The calculator doesn't know how to order that, but the calculator does know how to order numbers. So assign a number to each of those seasons, and then we can get it into the calculator. I've gone and copied through the data, the deseasonalized data, so from this table up here, copy it across to this here, and what we can do is get this into the calculator. So you'll see here, enter the data into lists and spreadsheets. The X list, so that's our IV, that's obviously the time, so that's quarter. And the Y list, that's our de dependent variable, that's the deseasonalized sales data, which is up here. When you do that, I'll do it on the calculator in a moment, but there is a graph here for us to have a look at already. You can see that it is definitely seasonal. We've got peaks happening here. We've got it at quarter three, then at quarter seven, and then quarter 11. So it's going up by fours. So each year it's happening at the same time of year, and you'll see the troughs are happening at quarter four, quarter eight, and quarter 12. So again, every four quarters. So every year, same time every year. Have a look at this the um, deseasonalized data plotted. Can you see what it's done? It has reduced these peaks that we can see across here. They are much lower. It's lifted the troughs. And what we've got is a smoother graph. We can now plot a straight line. And you can see there is a trend. It is trending upwards. It is headed up this way. So without smoothing that, it's a lot harder to see. Imagine trying to fit a straight line to this data here. It's a lot more difficult to see that trend without deseasonalizing first. So what we want to do is we want to get this data into our calculator. So lists and spreadsheets. I've done it already, so you might like to pause here and do it yourself. But we want a list called quarter, and that goes down to 12. And we also want D sales. Just don't type in deseasonalized sales. That'll take you forever. Just use D for deseasonalized and enter your data in. Okay, what I want to do now is, I mean, I've plotted it just to look at it, but you have a graph there already done for you. That's what it looks like on a time series graph. Don't actually need to do that to get our regression line, though. What we do is just on your list and spreadsheets page, we go menu, four for statistics, one for stat calculations, and then number four for linear regression, regression A plus B, X. That's our least squares regression line. In the X list, again, we want our time, which is quarter, and Y list is our D sales. Press OK, and what you'll get is your least squares regression line. There's your Y-intercept, A, your gradient, B. We've also got um, our Pearson's correlation coefficient, so that's telling us it looks like a strong linear relationship here, 0 0.88, and we've got our coefficient of determination as well. We just need this though, A and B, to make our predictions. So let's copy that into the table given. 
So we have 837.98 when rounded to two decimal places and 32.07 again rounded to two decimal places. Okay, so that's all written out for you, what I just did there. We want linear regression A plus BX. Our A value, 837.98. B value. We can see it's a positive gradient, had a positive trend, it was headed upwards, which makes sense. Okay, write the DC's last equation in terms of the variable. So I'm not using Y and X. The Y, the dependent variable, is D sales. So I need to write D sales is equal to, we write A first, so that's 837.98 positive gradient, so plus 32.07, that's multiplied by the IV, which is quarter. That's our equation. We can now use this to make predictions or to forecast. We're looking into the future, make predictions slash forecast. And that's what we're going to do to finish up. So there's our equation, it's rounded to two decimal places. Let's make some predictions now. And we have to do something important at the end and that is convert the prediction so that it's back to the original raw data. Because remember, we're not working with the raw data at the moment, we're working with the de-seasonalized data. We took out the seasonal influence before and what we have to do when we make a prediction is we have to put that seasonal influence back into our data. So. Let's predict the sales figure for summer 2011. If you have a look at your table back here, we finished off in 2010 in spring. So the very, very next season down here would be summer 2011, wouldn't it? So after spring, we have summer. And obviously after 2010, we have 2011. So this is going to be this one here, which would be quarter 13. The very, very next one would be quarter 13. Therefore... If I have a look here, summer 2011 would be quarter 13. So if I've got a value for quarter, I can now put that into my equation. Remember your equation was 837.98 plus 32.07, and it was times by the quarter, which is 13. Now you'll need to do that on your calculator. This is going to give us a de-seasonalized sales prediction, and that is 12.54. 0.89 rounded to two decimal places. Remember, this is deseasonalized. This has the seasonal influence removed. So finally, to get it back to the original data to make our prediction um, accurate, we need to reverse what we did before. So remember before we divided by the seasonal index to, to deseasonalize. So the opposite of that is to multiply by the seasonal index. And that's why here we've got written multiply the deseasonalized prediction by the seasonal index that, that is appropriate. That is undoing what we did before. The seasonal index for summer was 1.03. So what we need to do is multiply our deseasonalized prediction by the seasonal index for summer. So that's by 1.03. It is going to increase it just a little bit, it brings it up to 12. 92.54 and this is our actual prediction for summer 2011. Okay we'll do one more and that is looking at the sales figure for spring 2012. So this is going a couple of years into the future using this trend so this prediction uh, this this equation that helps us to predict. First we need to work out what quarter is spring 2012. If we have a look at this, the quarters, the quarter numbers for spring, first of all for 08, it's 4. If you go ahead a year, you add on 4, you get 8. 2010, add on another 4 quarters, we get 12. That means um, for 2011, spring must be 12 plus 4, must be quarter number 16. So for 2012, which is the one that we want, we need to add on another 4 quarters to 16. So that gives us quarter number of 20. Okay, if I go down to my prediction page, spring 2012 is quarter 20. So remember, when you 
add on a year, you add on four. If it was um, broken up into months, you'd have to add on 12, obviously, because there's 12 months in a year. So let's do our prediction. 8, 3, or is it 8, 3, 7.98? plus 32.07 times by 20. And what you get is 1479.38. Okay, so remember this is de-seasonalized. Remember spring? Spring was the, the season where the sales were really, really low. So looking at this de-seasonalized figure here, it's quite high, isn't it? If you have a look at the actual figure for summer, summer which was um, was around about the average, that was around 1292. So we know that this de-seasonalized figure is quite high. So what we do, remember, we undo the de-seasonalizing. So we're going to add in the seasonal influence. We're going to multiply by the seasonal index. And the seasonal index for spring was 0 0.52. So when we multiply by this, it's actually going to reduce this de-seasonalized prediction by about half because when you multiply by a half it is basically halving the figure that you've got so when you multiply by that SI it is going to either reduce it down to where it should be or it's going to increase it if your um, if your figure was actually above if your seasonal index was above one so when we do that it's going to bring 1479 I'll write it out whoops 1479 0.38 multiplied by 0 0.52 and that brings it down to 769.28 when rounded. So you can see that it has reduced it. We know that spring it should be really low compared to the average. So this de-seasonalized data when seasonalized has come down to 769.28. Really important that you remember to bring it back to the original data otherwise you're working with I guess the smoothed value or the transformed value. You're not working with the original data. So this final step is absolutely essential. At this point what I want you to do is finish off any questions from 7D that you haven't done. So I skipped a few when I gave you exercises for seasonal indices. So I want you to go back to 7D and finish any that I didn't give you because the ones I didn't give you were the ones that involved de-seasonalizing. So first you're going to have a go at de-seasonalizing data. Then in exercise 7E what you're going to do is use an equation. So you're going to generate an equation using your de-seasonalized data and you're going to make predictions from there. So basically everything I've done in this video you are going to practice in these two exercises here and then we're going to uh, start revising because we have the final part of the SAC for core coming up shortly.